We have first from Bhutan, Dr. Kim Rai, who will be on the Retina service doing a retinal fellowship. And she is one of the really well-trained, superb surgeons from Bhutan. Will be the first uh, retinal surgeon in Bhutan. And then we have two uh, doctors from Ghana. This is Dr. Peter Arma, and he will be on the oculoplastic service, doing an oculoplastic healing fellowship here for three months then in Nepal, then back here. And then our director from our programs in Ghana, Dr. Seth Larche, will be here. He'll be working with myself and Dr. Crandall. And he'll be here also for three months. Good morning. Uh, my first two weeks here, I, was, I had the opportunity to work with Dr. Dries in the pediatric ophthalmology. It was really interesting there, all the things that they taught me in medical school that they told me I would never see in practice. Dr. Dree sees those patients. Um, it was a really interesting two weeks, and we ended up seeing one patient that I like to present here. And it's not necessarily a patient that I'm presenting to teach specific facts about this patient, but present him to get some ideas on how we can uh, help this child. Um, so he's a three-year-old male who's born with bilateral cleft lip and palate. He had an extensive genetic workup that didn't show any genetic anomalies, just that it was an isolated um, issue. He has hypertelorism, uh, had hydrocephalus, and on an old exam in Arizona where he moved from just recently, he um, had a keyhole pupil, um, microphthalmia, but mom doesn't remember anything else. She says, you know, I had this smaller eye, had a small pupil, we don't know what else was going on. Um, we're trying to get the records from that outside physician. He was away on business this last week. We were unable to get those records. Um, mom's hopefully um, working to get those records to us. On our exam, the initial presentation, um, the chief complaint was constant closing of his left eye, excessive eye rubbing, red eyes. Two months ago is when the mom noticed it, started progressing, and he was very light sensitive and there's no reported trauma. On our exam under anesthesia, um, as this kid was unable to sit still for a full exam, um, interocular pressures, pretty equal bilateral, um, nothing really there. Plano in the right eye, left eye we were unable to, and I'll show you some pictures that will um, describe that. Foreshortened palbebral fissure. Um, then in the left eye we found a vascularized mass in the anterior chamber with hyphema, no view of the iris or the lens. And when I show you this picture, it's important to note that um, it's hard to tell without the uh, stereo on this, but these vessels that I'm going to show you are actually deep to the cornea. They're in the anterior chamber. Um, so that's the RETCAM photo right there. And that's the mass that I'm talking about right there that's actually deep around the limbus. Um, on our view, we could see the uh, normal limbal vasculature 360 degrees around. And this was an act, a separate structure. And then down here about 5 o'clock, there was a, either a continuation of the mass or a separate piece of the mass. <coughs> um, we sent him for ultrasound. We were unable to get the high-frequency ultrasound. He was unable to sit still um, well enough for the high-frequency ultrasound. So these were the best we could do right now. Um, he had a tuft on the optic disc. Uh, he had a thickened posterior capsule and a peripheral vitreous membrane. Um, then we sent him for MRI and CT. You can see the thickened area of the retina here and also on the posterior lens capsule right there. Um, after, without contrast with fat saturation, uh, you get a little bit better view of that in both areas. And then after, after contrast, you can see that the um, anterior chamber, the kind of the lens area, um, lights up a little bit. Uh, there's uh, some enhancement there. And then on the CT, it's important to note that there are no calcifications. Um, the official read, they didn't um, really agree with the enhancement. And when Dr. Andres and I looked closer at the images, we, we both agree that there is some enhancement there. They didn't really see anything. And they just noticed the morphology and signal um, difference of the left ocular lens. 
So our differential right now is rather broad. There's a few things on here that we're really concerned about, um, but some of the other things that could be going on are some self-inflicted trauma, uh, medial epithelioma, retinoblastoma, the diffuse infiltrating type without calcification, um, a type of infectious uveitis is something that we haven't been able to rule out yet, um, intraocular foreign body, um, JXG, uh, leukemia, and persistent fetal fetal vasculature is something Dr. Dries and I talked about that might explain the posterior findings, but wouldn't, ex wouldn't explain the anterior mass. So at this point, uh, the next steps that we're taking right now are trying to get the records, uh, doing some lab workup for infectious uveitis, CBC, and we didn't know that he had this mass when we scheduled for the exam under anesthesia, so at that point we couldn't do the ERG, but we'd like to bring the child back to do the ERG. Um, our main concern are the life-threatening, uh, the cancer issues, and at this point we're looking to see what other tests we might should do at this point, um, when, when or if, if we should consider inoculation, and if there's any suggestions from um, the doctors in the audience. Which slide? Yeah, the clinical Yes. And while you're while you're going back, I appreciate everyone's input on this. I don't know what this is. The differential for the two persistent infiltrating the blastoma was uh, you know, mass and cells in the antechamber that's unusual. Nevertheless, the young usually got a ciliary rod presents with a lens not sublocated lens. Usually the antechamber doesn't have mass. Um, it's a microscopic eye. No calcification. Not that we found out. Um, we're hoping to get some records, but per mom, other other than the uh, bilateral cleft palate uh, and lip, he doesn't have any other known issues.
Thanks for your input. Thank you, Dr. Dries, for helping me with this project. 